Hello and welcome to Jason's Macintosh Museum. I'm Jason, your host, as usual. And what we're looking at today is a Power Macintosh 6100 DOS compatible from 1995. Now, the 6100 was really a groundbreaking machine for Apple because it was one of the first machines they introduced with the new PowerPC CPU. Um, the, the, the whole the CPU was actually introduced in 1994 with three different series of machines. There was the 6100, the 7100, and the 8100. And the 6100 was the um, entry-level machine with the PowerPC chip. And it's you could compare it, say, between the transition between the Intel 486 and the Pentium, in that the Pentium, when running proper software, um, delivered a massive speed boost over the older CPU architecture. And the same is true of the PowerPC, because this, the PowerPC was the first major um, um, architecture change to the Macintosh, um, really since the original Macintosh of 1984, because all Macintosh models up to, up to the PowerPC's introduction used some variant of the Motorola 68000 CPU. First the 68000, then the 020, 030, and then the 040. But the PowerPC was an entirely different style of CPU. Um, I believe it was a RISC CPU as opposed to a CISC CPU in terms of the instruction set. Um, and it also was much more efficient internally. But a bit like the Pentium, it did need um, software to be recompiled to take full advantage of the power that it offered. Um, so, the 6100 you see here is also special because of what's written below the floppy drive here, DOS compatible. So what does that mean? Does it mean it can run DOS? Well, yes it does. Because what Apple were finding in the mid-1990s, especially with the growth of the Windows operating system, was that people would like to be using a Mac to do most of their work but there were certain PC or Windows applications that they had to run. So Apple's solution was to offer a built-in PC CPU card in some of their Macintosh models that actually contained a proper Intel CPU along with all the supporting um, components, which allowed your Macintosh to run not only the Mac OS, but also to run DOS and Windows. And this machine is set up for that. And we'll go into a bit more detail about the DOS compatibility in another video. But as for the specifics of this particular machine, this machine is a Power Macintosh 6100-66, which means it has a 66 megahertz um, Motorola PowerPC 601 CPU. Um, this machine was also offered in a 60 megahertz configuration. This one is the 66. Um, and I believe it has either four or eight megabytes of memory on board. I'm not entirely sure, actually, off the top of my head. Um, but it can be expandable um, with two SIM slots. Um, it has, um, I believe it is a one gigabyte hard disk, um, built-in CD-ROM, built-in SuperDrive. Um, and this particular model was introduced in January of 1995 and was discontinued in... Um, May, I believe, of 1996. So, what we'll do now is we'll have a closer look at the inside and outside of the Power Macintosh 6100. So here is the front view of the Power Macintosh 6100, and you can see that it's a it's quite a um, a slim looking machine, in that it uses the you could say the pizza box style of case. So it has a relatively large footprint, but it's very short. So, looking at the front, we have the Power Macintosh um, label, 6100-66, and the power LED is down here in the bottom left-hand corner. Over here, we have the built-in CD-ROM drive, and I believe this one is a, uh, I think it's a double-speed CD-ROM, if I remember correctly, or it could be a, a quad-speed. 
um, and this one is a SCSI CD-ROM. The hard drive sits just behind this panel here. And over here we have the built-in 1.4 megabyte super drive, which can read and write uh, both PC and Mac format floppies. And we also have the DOS compatible label here, indicating the presence of a, a Intel CPU card. And we have the power switch here. And oddly enough, for a relatively, relatively modern model of Macintosh, it does not support soft power. That is a physical power switch on the front, so you have to use that to turn the machine on and off. You can't use the power key on the keyboard. So that's the front of the 6100. So we'll quickly flip it round and have a look at the back. Here's the back view. So starting from the left we have the power cord or power inlet and it also comes with a power outlet which I believe is also switched so normally you'd have your monitor powered off that so that the monitor turns on when the computer is turned on. We have a lock, a slot here for a security cable lock. I believe that's the serial number of the machine up there. We have the what's known as the AAUI Ethernet port which is actually designed for use with various types of network connections, um, but I'll be talking about that in, in more detail in a, another video. We have the external SCSI port here, and we have the monitor port here, which is not a, step, not a monitor port that you normally see on an old Macintosh. Um, this one is, I'm trying to think of the name, it'll come to me, uh, I can't think of what it's called, but it requires an adapter to, for use with most Apple uh, monitors. We have the printer and modem ports here, one ADB port here, and then audio out and microphone in ports. And here we have the reset and interrupt switches as well. And above that we have the expansion slot here. The 6100s only have room for one expansion card. And in this case, it's occupied by the um, DOS compatibility card, which, again, we'll talk about later um, or in another video. So, that's the back view. So now, we'll take this apart. Okay, well, hopefully you can see what I'm doing here as I take the 6100 apart. Now, to take the front panel and top cover off, you need to release two plastic clips here and you can see one is already broken. Unfortunately, um, especially as they get older, some of these Macintosh models have very brittle case uh, plastic. So if you apply too much force to these clips, you may snap them off. So that one's already broken off. So if we just lift this one up carefully, we can, we can tip the case up, move it forward and pull off the front panel. So the front panel is now clear of the system. So we'll put that aside. Just rotate this so we can see the front. So what do we have here? Well, what we have, we have the hard disk sitting here, the CD-ROM sitting here, and the floppy drive sitting over here. And like a lot of Apple Macintosh models, it's actually quite easy to disassemble. And I believe with this, in fact, you, I think there's only one screw to remove to take the whole system apart. So first of all, the DOS compatibility card is sitting here. We have to remove that first. So if I just undo, there are two thumb screws on the back here, which we remove. And we've got two connectors here for the CD audio. We'll just pull those out carefully. And then we just, we carefully tip the card up and take it out. So this is the DOS compatibility card, which will be the subject of another video. So we'll set that aside. So now we can take out the disk drives. So the hard disk, take off this metal shield at the front and unplug the, the power and data cables. And then we can pull up. There is a tab here you have to pull um, sorry, is it pull up? Or it's pushed down on this tab actually, and then you can slide it out the front of the case. So that's the disc. 
It's a SCSI hard drive. It's the Quantum Fireball SE. I believe it's a one gigabyte, which will tell us uh, it's normally on a label. I'm trying to read it. It looks like it's a 1280. Uh, no, it's, it's a 6.4 gigabyte, actually, so larger than I thought. So that's the disk. So we'll set that aside. Now the CD-ROM. So this is a Apple CD300i, which means that it's a double speed CD-ROM. I don't know whether it's the original model that would have come with this, but it's a SCSI CD-ROM and it works just fine. So just pull, detach the cables. And with the hard drive, there is a tab. You, this time you have to pull up on the tab. I think you pull up on the tab, do you? You put, yes, you pull up on the tab and then you can slide up. Don't forget the CD audio cable there. And there is the CD-ROM. You'll notice that so far we haven't had to use any tools of any kind to take this, take this machine apart. The floppy drive over here, all you do is you, there are two plastic tabs, you pull them up, pull, well, first take the, uh, the uh, I think this, actually, this shield stays with the drive, so you have to unlatch it from the top so that it's free, and then separate these two tabs, push them out, and then the drive can slide forward, and make sure I unplug the data cable there, and the drive comes out. Notice that the shield actually is connected to the, the front case screws, mounting screws for the drive, so set that aside. Okay, so what else? Well, at this point, um, we, 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 well, we can take the power supply out, um, and at this point you actually have to remove a screw back here to take the power supply out. We won't do that just yet, we'll take these cables out, we'll just unhook the SCSI cable, and the CD audio cables, they can unplug. That one's a little, hmm, that one's a little bit stuck. Oh, there it goes. Then we have the power extension cable here. We'll just unplug that. Okay. So now we unplug, we unplug the power connector from the logic board. And I think, oh, there's the power LED connector down there, speaker connector here, and the floppy drive connector here. So we'll remove all of those. So at this point, we can take the logic board out. Now, there is one screw to remove down here to take it out. So let me find a screwdriver. I'll take that screw out. Okay, so I should be able to, oh, there's another screw in here, in this uh, plastic standoff here. There we go, that's out. So I should now be able to slide the board forward and remove it from the case. Just make sure it clears the connectors. So there we are, there is the logic board from the Power Macintosh 6100. So, at this point, if you want to proceed further and take the power supply out, you'd remove one screw here and then slide the power supply forwards and take it out. This front drive carrier um, can be released. There are tabs, there is a tab down here and a tab down here. You release those tabs like so and the whole carrier slides back. Though we might leave that in the case for, for now. And I think you also have to pull up on it at the back. So if you release the tabs at the front and then pull up on the back, you can see that we can slide the carrier out. Although you have to remove the power supply first to get the drive carrier out. <laughs> so I think we'll just leave it as it is. Here is the logic board out of the Macintosh, Power Macintosh 6100. So let's have a closer look at this. So over on the left, we have the uh, expansion slot, which um, basically can be converted into a processor direct slot, 
with a special adapter. And in fact, the adapter is what the DOS compatibility card uses to convert that slot into a PDS slot, as you can see there, because the card itself is a PDS card and it uses this right angle adapter. So that's the expansion slot. Um, you can also put uh, video cards, I believe, in there as well. Um, but unfortunately, with the 6100, you only have one slot. So it does limit your uh, options with expansion. But thankfully, it has onboard Ethernet so and onboard video, so you don't have to really worry about, about that. So moving over from there, we have the ROM SIM that sits in this slot here. And then we have the Level 2 Cache module that sits here. I believe this is a one megabyte level two cache uh, module. Um, I don't believe it was, I believe it was standard on the 66 megahertz model, but not the 60 megahertz model. But certainly having it does improve your system performance quite a bit. And then we have the main CPU. This is the Motorola or IBM. I'm not sure who makes this particular one. Um, PowerPC 601 CPU clocked at 66 megahertz. And note that older PowerPC CPUs didn't require a fan. All they needed was a heatsink like that. Uh, we have down here, we have the um, power front panel power LED connector. Uh, various other components there. Um, some of the glue logic chips there. Um, not sure what that is. Could be the floppy controller. Uh, speaker and the floppy connectors. The main power connector. This is the onboard memory. I think it's four megabytes um, soldered straight to the board. Over here, the CMOS battery. Now, normally I don't install these, but with this model of Macintosh, you have to. Because for some reason, um, the Power Macintosh 6100 will not initialize its onboard video if the CMOS battery is either flat or missing. So, this did trip me up initially where I started the 6100 up without a battery installed. I got the startup chime, but the video did not initialize and it would not boot. And I wasn't sure why until I discovered that you have to have a functioning CMOS battery <laughs> in the system in order for the video to work and for it to boot up. So it's something to keep in mind. But of course, um, when you put the machine away, make sure that you take the battery out. So above the onboard memory, we have the two 72-pin SIM slots for memory expansion. Uh, these take standard a fast page or EDO um, SIMs, although I don't believe we can make use of EDO memory, although it is compatible with that. So I believe this has, these are both 32 megabyte modules. So over from there, we have some more support chips. Uh, up here, that's the sound chip there, the crystal chip. Uh, that's the CD audio in connector there. Uh, various other components there, more glue logic chips there. Um, that's, I believe, the RAM DAC for the onboard video, digital analog converter. Serial controllers there, I believe. Uh, that's the SCSI controller, I think, although it's very hard to see what's written on that. Might a bit, bit of dust on there. What's... Oh, it's an AMD. Yep, so that's probably the SCSI controller. Uh, the CUDA chip there that controls the uh, real-time clock um, and a few other things. And then the various ports at the top. So network, SCSI, video, and ADB, serial, and audio. So that's the logic board out of the Power Macintosh 6100. So in the next video, I'll be, I'll reassemble the um, 6100. Um, it will then start it up and demonstrate some software. And in a video after that, I'll be talking in more detail about the DOS compatibility card and also demonstrating um, DOS and Windows 3.1 running on this machine in uh, DOS compatibility mode. So thank you for watching.